Thank you so much for checking out Learn Linux TV, your source for Linux-related fun and learning. I just love making this content for you guys, but making such content isn't cheap. If you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me by becoming a patron. As a patron, you'll enjoy ad-free versions of every video that I upload, and also, at specific tiers, you'll also enjoy early access to select videos before the rest of the world. But even if you're not able to support me by becoming a patron, no problem, there's other ways to help. You can simply click the like button on the videos that you enjoy that would help out. In addition to that, word of mouth helps as well. So if you're enjoying my content, please help spread the learning by telling your friends and coworkers about the channel. If you're looking for something to read, well, you're in luck, I write books. And you can check out my latest books at learnlinux.tv books. Are you looking for help for your Linux server related projects? Or are you a business that has a Linux related project that you're working on and you need another set of hands? Well, you're in luck. Go to learnlinux.tv slash request hyphen assistance. There you can check out my schedule and consider hiring me to help you out. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. To create a VM or not to create a VM? That is the question. Whether it results in more memory usage and a pin CPU causes you troubles, oh, I'm sorry, this isn't Proxmox Shakespeare. But I am actually here to answer a very important question, which is whether or not you should create your resource as a virtual machine or a container. There's pros and cons when it comes to each, and that's exactly what we're going to tackle in this particular video. Now, it's going to be a lecture in this video right here, but don't worry, we'll get back into the action of Proxmox shortly, but we do need to answer this question, so let's go ahead and dive in. So here on your screen right now, you are seeing an actual Proxmox cluster. In fact, this is the actual Proxmox cluster that we will be creating later on in the course. And I'm able to show you this because I don't actually record the videos in the same order that you see them in, but this works out for me because I have a container right here and I also have a virtual machine. If you take a look at the icons, they're different for each. So for this one right here, this icon, it kind of resembles like a cube, so to speak. So essentially it's an icon of a container. Down here, we have an icon that looks kind of like an iMac or some kind of integrated computer. Interesting choice for an icon for a virtual machine that's supposed to represent a server, but I digress. This is a virtual machine right here. Now this, in case you're curious, is a container template. This is something that we'll be creating later in the course. And this right here is a virtual machine template. And what's cool about a template is that I can right click it, click clone, and spin off a virtual machine or a container from the respective template. Now we'll get to those things later in the course, but for right now, what we're trying to do is understand what to choose when it comes to creating a container or a virtual machine. I mean, right up here, we have a create virtual machine button and we have a button for creating a container. So you could do one or the other. You can have multiple containers, multiple virtual machines, a mix of both, it's up to you. So what should you pick? Now the short answer is that you should pick whatever makes the most sense for your use case. What I like to do is base this decision on how much RAM I have on the host. So if I click right here on this host right here, you can see that I have quite a bit of memory free. I'm actually only using 1.6 GB out of about 125. Technically it's 128 gigs of RAM, but anyway, I have a lot of memory. So if this was a resource starved server, let's just say for example, I had four gigs of RAM, that's not very much. You can still use four gigs of RAM, but you're kind of limited there because if you think about it, each virtual machine will use at least 512 megabytes of RAM, but honestly, nowadays, I wouldn't create a virtual machine with less than one gigabyte of RAM. So if you have a system with four gigs of RAM, then you could already consider one gig sacrificed for Proxmox itself. So that leaves you about three. And if you estimate one gigabyte per each VM, and that's on the low end, then you can basically run just three virtual machines on that host. And even less so if you are running a resource intensive virtual machine, maybe an application that is just memory hungry, 
perhaps you can only get away with one virtual machine. Now, containers are a little bit different in this regard because they use fewer resources. So if you are running a home lab and you just don't have the funds for a server like this, I get it. This is expensive. This hardware is not cheap. And it's very common to have a system with about four gigs of RAM in the home lab because, well, when it comes to home lab, you use what you can get. So in the case of a resource starved server, then in my opinion, it makes sense to use containers as much as you can. There's an additional downside when it comes to containers that I'll get to here very shortly. But the first thing to think about is how much resources you actually have available on the server, on the host server itself. And in some cases, that'll actually decide for you. So again, if you have like four gigs of RAM, in my opinion, your decision is already made. Go with containers. Now, when you create a virtual machine, and I'll use this one right here as an example, and I'll go to the hardware tab. I have two gigs of RAM, more or less, that's allocated for this virtual machine in particular. I have one CPU core, so I guess that's not all that bad. But all I'm doing right here in this virtual machine is running Apache, and all that's doing is just serving the default Apache start page. So honestly, two gigs of RAM is probably a waste for a use case like that. This particular server is most likely better served as a container instead of an actual virtual machine. Now, if I take a look at this container right here, I have one gig of RAM allocated for this, but this one gig of RAM, you can actually think of this as a limit. It's not actually using one gig of RAM, but it can use up to one gig of RAM. If this container only needed like 768 megabytes or something, then that's all it's going to use, but it can't use more than one gig, so it's a limit. That's one of the differences between virtual machines and a container. And of course, it gets way more involved than that. I mean, we're dealing with C groups and all kinds of Linux kernel things here that I'm not going to get into in this series. But to make it simple, containers use fewer resources than virtual machines. So in my opinion, anytime you can get away with using a container, you probably should. But there's one downside though when it comes to containers versus virtual machines that you need to be aware of. So here we have a virtual machine. And as you can see, I have three hosts. This particular virtual machine is running on PVE2. That's the name of this Proxmox server that is running on right now. I have PVE1 and PVE3 as well. And since I have a cluster here, which is something we'll create later on, I can right click on this VM and I can migrate it over to another host. So I'm going to migrate it over to PVE1. Let's see how long it takes. And here's the thing. Normally what I do is I edit loading times because I just can't stand loading times. It's just a waste of your time. If something takes a bunch of minutes to finish, then that translates to several minutes of video time. So I'll fast forward through it. I'll speed it up. That's what I do. But this time I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click migrate and I'm not going to edit this part of the video at all. Let's see how long this actually takes. So wait a minute. That's it. I could barely finish my sentence. It says task OK. Well, actually, all it's doing is requesting a high availability migration. So it takes a little bit more time than that. So we see an icon right here that looks like a paper airplane. So that means that this server here is migrating to another host and it's already done. OK, so you saw that it didn't really take too long to migrate a virtual machine. But what does that have to do with containers versus virtual machines? Now, one thing you didn't see in the output is you didn't see any notation that is going to shut down the virtual machine. It was a live migration, and that means exactly what it sounds like. It just simply migrated it over to another host and it did that live. Now, now let's see what that looks like then if I try to live migrate a container over to that other host. So I have this container here running on PVE1. I want to move it down here to PVE2. Let's do it. So I'll click on Migrate, and let's take a look at the output. This is going to take a little bit longer, and that's one downside right there is that migrations with containers, they do take longer. And one thing to note is that if you look at this, it's telling me that it's shutting down that container. 
So actually, live migration is not possible with containers at all. So if you are running an application that cannot go down, then already that rules out containers because if you migrate a container, it does stop the app, it shuts down the container, it's not available, your users cannot access it, and it's going to literally copy that container over to the other host. So it's not a live migration, it's copying it from host A over to host B. Now the process is already done, and if you look at the output here, there's a lot more going on. First it shut it down, it started the migration, it created a logical volume, that makes sense so far, and then as you can see here, it's actually copying data, and then it's doing a final cleanup, and then it's going to start the container on the target. So now, the container is right here. So again, you can't live migrate a container. If that's something that you need to be able to do, that rules out containers. Your app will be down while it migrates. Now, another thing that I want to bring to your attention is that not all applications will actually run properly in a container. Now, there's no master list of applications you can download somewhere, like a spreadsheet or something that lists which apps work in containers and which apps don't. It's more or less trial and error. I've run into applications every now and then that, for whatever reason, just won't run in a container. Another downside about containers is that if you are running an application that is supported by a vendor and they discover that you are running their app in a container, sometimes there's stigma against containers and I don't really understand why that is. But if that's the case, they might actually deny you support. There's no actual reason why they can't help you, but you know, software vendors are what they are. If it's an unsupported configuration, something that they don't have any information about, then it's possible they may not support you. So if you are running an application that has some sort of support contract, you might want to check that first to see if there's a clause in there that they don't want you running that in a container. Yes, I know they should get with the times. It's silly, but it is what it is. No judgment. Sometimes that's the case. But even if support is not the case or not a concern, Usually what it comes down to is resources. Containers use fewer resources, so they allow you to stretch your hardware even further. Now again, here, I'm not really resource starved. I mean, I have a lot of RAM, so in my case, I could create VMs or containers all day long. It doesn't really matter. But some of you guys, you are not running a production Proxmox server like I am. Maybe you just have an old server that you're learning on or maybe you work in an enterprise that's very cheap and you can't get them to buy that awesome server that you want and they end up buying something cheap that doesn't really have all that much in the way of resources. It is what it is. So as long as you choose according to your hardware, I think you should be fine. All right, so now that we have answered the question as far as whether you should be creating resources as virtual machines or containers, why don't we actually create a virtual machine? In the next video, I'll be showing you the process of launching a virtual machine. The video after that, I'll show you how to create a template of that virtual machine. And then after that, we're going to start getting into containers specifically. And you know what? That next video should already be uploaded. So I'll meet you over there and we'll launch our first virtual machine.